All right, chapter 25, alkenes. As soon as I take the name alkenes from its suffix E and E, you get the idea that they must contain a carbon-carbon double bond. And as soon as you uh, hear the word or imagine the carbon-carbon double bond, you understand there cannot be a substance by the name of methane because methane won't exist. In order to complete a carbon-carbon double bond, we need at least two carbon atoms. So the very first member starts from ethene, as methane does not exist, then propene. Then in case of butene, there is butuanine, and there can be another isomer, which is butuene, because the double bond can be situated at the first carbon atom, or it can be situated at the second carbon atom. These two are actually isomers of one another, where the function group is either at the corner or terminal carbon, or may maybe it's in the, with the center carbon. You would notice that there is a carbon-carbon double bond in this structure. Students sometimes tend to ask the question that do you have to have only one carbon-carbon double bond in the structure? Can't you have more? Yeah, we can always have more. We can may have two carbon-carbon double bonds or three carbon-carbon double bonds for bigger structures. Uh, yes, we may have many more than that, but at this level, IGCSE, we only cater the examples which have one double bond, right? So now, moving on, it is not possible to have an alkene with one carbon atom because alkenes have to have a carbon-carbon double bond. So methane does not exist. Now, moving on, isomers, but one in and but two in are isomers to one another, but they may have a branch chain isomer as well. So now you have actually two rules for isomerism. The first rule is to move the functional group. Now, by functional group, I may mean an atom, a group of atoms, or anything like that. Here specifically, I mean the double bond. If the double bond is present on first and second carbon atom, the compound is named differently and is an isomer to a compound where it is present on another set of carbon atoms and hence named differently. We've already been through this, so I hope you understand. The second way to make uh, an isomer is to convert an unbranched structure to a branched one or vice versa, actually. So if you're in, in exams given with a structure, a straight chain structure, you may convert it into branch chain or a branch chain structure into straight chain in order to draw the isomers. You have done this practice with me in our last study session. So I don't think we need to practice again. again. Do we? No. All right. So let's move on. Remember, these are the only two rules of making isomers. You either move the functional group from the corner carbon to the center carbon, or vice versa, or you may go ahead with a branching to an unbranched one or vice versa. Now, as soon as we talk about alkenes, we need to define the unsaturated hydrocarbons. Alkenes are unsaturated hydrocarbons because they contain a carbon-carbon double bond. And carbon can actually bond with more hydrogen atom, but it wasn't possible due to a carbon-carbon double bond, hence the word unsaturated. Compounds may contain more than one double or triple bonds. A way of thinking about this is that the alkenes are not saturated with hydrogen atoms. They do not have maximum number of hydrogen atoms for the number of carbon atoms. Hence the difference in general formula. As you understand, the general formula for alkenes was CnH2n plus two. So it actually has a higher number of carbon atoms as compared to alkenes, whose general formula is simply CnH2n. So the number of hydrogen atoms is twice the number of carbon atoms, which means alkenes have the same empirical formula. All the alkenes on the planet have this empirical formula. All right? Yeah. So the alkene with 11 carbon atoms will have 22 hydrogen atoms and the molecular formula would be like this. Again, the empirical formula would be like this. So it's pretty easy. 
no matter which formula we're talking about, all the alkenes on the planet have, can be simplified to the empirical formula CH2. Moving on to the next part, physical properties. Now, those are very similar to that of alkanes, but remember, small alkanes were up to four carbon atoms at gases at room temperature. The same is true for alkenes. Their gases up to C4H8, and next dozen or so are liquids, and then comes the solids. Again, the members of homologous series show a trend in physical properties, which means as the number of carbon atoms would increase, the melting point, the boiling point, the density, as well as the viscosity will increase. So everything that we wrote as a point for alkanes does work as a point for alkenes as well. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Chemical reactions. Combustion is pretty simple. In this case, uh, again, carbon dioxide and water is produced in an excess of oxygen. Remember, if there are, is no excess, again, the incomplete combustion would be the same as alkanes. Either the incomplete combustion would result in carbon monoxide and water, or the incomplete combustion would yield carbon plus water. And this carbon is commonly known as soot. So this also goes for alkenes. So the same combustion reactions, complete or incomplete, do exist in both alkanes and alkenes. As I explained earlier, substitution reactions are for alkanes. However, addition reactions are for alkenes. So we are going to move up next with addition. Carbon-carbon double one is the functional group. This functional group is going to decide most of the chemical properties. Now, alkenes are going to undergo addition reactions. Part of double bond breaks. It then becomes a carbon-carbon single bond, and the electrons are used to join other atoms onto carbon atoms, making covalent bonds. So let's take a look at addition of bromine. We have seen this reaction a couple of times in the previous chapter, as, a, as well as this one. They do not need any heat, light, or catalyst for this reaction. We carry out this reaction with bromine water, aqueous bromine solution, which actually has an orange-brown appearance as written over here, right? And as soon as it reacts with an alkene to form the addition product, it is turned to a colorless liquid. Now, this big change of color from orange to colorless gives us a pretty good idea that ethene has been reacted and converted into 1,2-dibromethane. I hope you understand this numbering of the compound. It's yeah. one. It's two, one, two. Then there is a hyphen because bit, no, numbers and letters are separated by hyphens. Then there is a di bromo because there are two bromine atoms and eth, two carbon atoms, in because they are singly bonded. I hope every part of the name make, makes its own sense as explained. Now, you would notice that there are two hydrogen atoms already attached to every carbon atom. So these two for this one and these two for this one, we have exactly added one whole molecule at the bottom of this one. So this tells us that addition reaction has its own meaning of addition because the entire molecule is added to an organic compound and we don't take anything out of it. I hope the phrase not taking anything out of it makes much more sense now, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's go through the hints, decode the name and make sure you see how it works. I've already worked it out for you so you understand what the decoding uh, means. Now, make sure how these formula relate to the full structures in the equation above. So make sure you understand these formulas as well as condensed structures and structural formulas. So it's easier for you to convert the one into other. All right. Now, yeah. this reaction is actually used as a test for unsaturation, or we may also call it as a test for alkenes, all right? Test for alkenes, how? You have an unalkene with you, and you're not even sure whether that's an alkene or that's an alkane. Pass it through bromine water. If the color changes from orange to colorless, it's an alkene. If the color does not change, it's an alkane. That's why we call it a test which is also given ahead of it. 
let's move on to the next page. Yeah, not even the next page, the paragraph at the bottom. So it tells you the same thing. This is a test for unsaturated compounds. You must be careful with the words you use here. The final mixture is colorless and not clear. Do not use the word clear. Clear means not cloudy. You can see through it. Bromine water is clear and any other solution can also be described as clear. All right, but not in this case. Now, so you understand that the orange brown or orange color turns to colorless instantly upon reaction with alkene. This reaction hardly takes a fraction of a second and the change in color can tell us what the, the reaction is moving forward. Now, if we tend to do the same reaction with propene, you would see that there are there is a double bond in propene. are added to both the doubly bonded carbon atoms and nothing actually happens to this entire part of the molecule. So the addition reactions do not disturb any saturated part of the molecule. They only disturb the doubly bonded portion of the molecule. I hope that is pretty clear from the equation, right? Yeah. Now the product is known as 1,2-dibromopropane, and I think every part of the name is <coughs> Yeah. Okay, now, in figure 25.3, interestingly, most of the color in the right-hand tube is now in the top organic layer. This is because the covalent bromine, which has a simpler molecular structure, is more soluble in organic compound than it is in water. Actually, we have mixed organic compound in water, Water was present as a part of bromine solution. Organic compound is the compound that we use as solvent to perform this experiment, as mentioned. All right. So yeah. moving on, let's clear it up. Extension work. Another kind of addition reaction, hydrogenation. As the name suggests, it means addition of hydrogen. Addition of hydrogen is actually pretty important because this specific reaction is going to convert an alkene back into an alkane for you. This is a pretty uh, common and important reaction in industry. One of the uses is production of margarine, which is made by polyunsaturated plant oils, corn oil, soybean oil, linseed oil, rapeseed oil, all of these oils can be converted into margarine, which is another form of butter. Butter is actually made with dairy. Margarine is made by plant oils. And margarine is actually a saturated form. Oil is the unsaturated form. We add hydrogen to the unsaturated form, the form that has many double bonds, and we convert it into a form which has no double bond and is in fact made up of single bonds only. So these are plant oils, which contains double bonds. And this might be margarine on this side as a product because it does not contain as many double bonds. Actually, it's mostly saturated. All right. So yeah. hydrogenation is addition of hydrogen. Addition reaction of alkenes. By adding hydrogen, we can convert them into alkenes. Remember. Alkene can be tested with a bromine water solution from orange to colorless. Alkane does not give the same color. It remains with the same orange brown color because alkanes cannot be converted. Okay. Yeah. The last reaction for this chapter, hydration reaction. The word hydration itself means addition of water. We even use the word hydrate for our bodies. When we are drinking less waters, the doctor suggests us to hydrate yourself. That means to keep water in adequate amounts. All right, so in this case, alkene would react with water to form an alcohol. So we are taking an alkene and we are converting it into an alcohol by adding water. Now, we may see water over here, 
But if I'm supposed to write the state symbol, I use G. Why? Because the starting material is steam. Why is it steam? The temperature required for reaction is 300 degrees centigrade. And anything above 100 degrees centigrade, we simply convert water into steam. I hope that makes sense, right? Yeah. Now we use 60 to 70 atm pressure, which is equal to this many pascal. We can simply write it as 1 into 10 raised to power 5 pascals, all right? Or simply speaking, 10 raised to power 5 pascals. Okay. Now, catalyst is phosphoric acid. This reaction produces high purity ethanol in industry for us. All right? Yeah. Now, as it was ethene, it's not written over here, it's a part of next chapter, but I'm going to cover it over here. It is converted into ethanol. But if we're going to add water to propene, it would give us propen one ol and propen two ol. In reality, propen two ol is formed much more than propen one ol. In the major reaction, hydrogen atom from water is first added to the end carbon, then the OH group is attached to the middle carbon. The addition of compounds to unsymmetrical again like propene will be explored at an in mass level. So this much information will not be catered at this paper. You just need to understand that propene would yield two products instead of one. This only yields one product. Starting from propene, there would be two products, propen one ol and propen two ol. As there are only two carbon atoms, so ethanol cannot be called as ethan one ol or ethan two ol. Actually, every ethanol molecule is ethan one ol itself. Your voice is I I was saying that every ethanol molecule is actually ethan one ol molecule. So we don't have to write it as ethan one ol every time because there is no other possibility. However, there is a possibility with propene and every other subsequent alkene, be it propene, butene, pentene, the list goes on. Okay. You will... So do we understand that? This finishes the chapter for us.